Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Andy Johnson. I'm the uh, manufacturing manager uh, as well as a tech support guy and also do uh, one of the instructors for the classes that we give on this very amp, the 5E3. Um, I'm going to be doing a short, <clears throat> short videos, a whole series of videos uh, about the little nuances of this amp. Um, if you're tuning into this video, you probably already know what this amp is. Um, if you don't, it's probably the most recorded amp in history. Um, it really kicked a fender in the butt when they made this thing. Um, it was an amp that you could uh, easily record in a studio and take to a gig because back then we weren't talking about you know 10,000 or 100,000 watt PA systems for for uh, you know for these uh, stadium shows that we have now. There were you know little shindigs that people would get together, and these were just great. Because you could throw them out of the back of a car on the interstate and it would be totally fine <laughs> with minimal amount of work. Um, this was the amp that really kicked uh, Fender into high gear for the Henry Ford type of manufacturing for um, pre-made modules, I guess you would say, um, to make an amp for different stations in the actual uh, the factory itself, which is really cool, and I will be going over that in the series of videos of, of what you know different stages would be. Um, this is kind of a cut and paste amp to where uh, I shouldn't say cut and paste, but it they use a lot of the same elements and a lot of, across the tweed line of amps: um, 5F1, 5F2, 5E3, uh, 5F4, the 5F11, the 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 basements, the pros, the supers. Um, the obscure bandmasters, all those amps, they, they incorporated a little bits and pieces of all of them together. Um, they were just put together in different ways and had some of them had a little bit different values because of the speaker choice or the output transform or, or if they used 6V6 tubes or 6L6 tubes. Um, but this, this was the king. Um, even to this day, this is, I'm, I don't know the figures, but it's got to be one of uh, Fender's best selling amps ever. Um, there's been, I don't know how many revisions to the, the reissues that they started making back uh, in the mid 80s up to now, um, and countless amount of, of you know, uh, actual OEM or, or boutique manufacturers that have built their entire career based on this one amp with little tweaks here and there. Um, just can't get enough of them. They're at a great price point, um, they sound great, and they're not too complicated to be able to build on a very small bench like what you see here. It's pretty easy. Um, now what we've done at Mojo is that we've taken this to the next level with these kits. Um, we have really sat down at the drawing board and tried to figure out how to make things better. Every little thing better in this. Um, and a lot of times we had to go back to the beginning to really figure these things out. Um, <clears throat> so we, we chose to use the particular type of pots, these CTS pots are made specifically for us. I don't know if you've ever ordered them, but on the back they're actually Stamp Mojo. They're actually made for us for our amp and guitar line through CTS, and they have, of course, brass shaft um, pots with sleeves. Uh, premium pots work really well. Um, we actually deal with an American aeronautic company to get the pilot light still. Um, these are genuine carling switches, like what they use on the originals. Um, the chassis itself is made in St. Louis. The transformers are Haybower made for us from direct teardowns um, of the original 5E3. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm sure there was an amp sacrifice we had to do that with, but it was for the greater good. Um, and we'll get more into that, of course, when we start uh, building this up. But what we have here is what I like to call a mechanical assembly. This basically has all the, the pots, the transformers, the you know all the hardware, screws, nuts, bolts, things like that already put onto the chassis. And I like to break this down in its inner manual, um, which is downloadable, by the way, on, on our website. If you go to the kit page, the 5E3 kit page, um, we have several of these out now for different amps. Um, the 5E3 is in a constant state of revision because there's always an easier way to do things, but it's pretty comprehensive um, with pictures and you know uh, component identity, uh, hardware breakout, you know things like that. Things that really help you. Um, how things are mounted, little nuances that you need to do with the actual kit itself, which is really cool. Um, it's taken a lot of time to develop these kits right. So, all I'm going to say is that when, when you start in the manual, what, what we do is to make this assembly, you know, throughout the, the entire build, easily digestible. You don't want to look at the hole as like, oh, God, this is horrible. I don't know, you know, I don't know where to start here. 
I don't know what this part does or goes where or, you know, I, I don't understand any of this, but what we do, <laughs> and that's okay, that's okay. Um, we all have to start somewhere and that's totally fine. If you've never even picked up a soldering iron, it's pretty, pretty straightforward how you do this. If you can read a map, um, or a GPS, <laughs> more or less, you can build an amp. You can build one of the greatest amps that ever existed, which is this. This amp, the 5E3, the Fender Deluxe. So, when we get started on this to break things down to make it easily digestible, what we do is <clears throat> we break it down into four individual components. We have the mechanical assembly, which is this. We have the board assembly, which I'm going to show you the wiring diagram here, is this black part right here that I will also be doing a short video on how to do this. Um, the actual mating of the board to the amp itself when you actually screw the board in and start wiring it up. Um, that includes all the wiring, your filament wiring. And then of course your, your, your final phase, step four, would be actually mating the completed chassis into the amp itself after everything's done and tested. And I'll be doing a, a short, you know, some videos on how to do that <coughs> coming up. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody is aware, but down here in North Carolina where Mojo is at, um, we've been on lockdown pretty much. Um, we've been fortunate because they are, fortunately our governor held out to last uh, yesterday, Monday, as a matter of fact, at 5 o'clock, it was a stay-at-home order. So um, we're, Mojo is still open. We're still running as best as we can. We're still getting orders out. We're still getting orders in. And we're still doing videos like this. Fortunately, I, I was able to take some home and be able to, to spend this time explaining the little tiny, you know, like I said, two or three times before, little nuances that you need to look at when building these amps um, and how raw the actual build is. Because everybody builds these differently. Everybody builds an amp differently. The wire is not going to lay exactly like what it is on the wiring diagram. And it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to be that neat. Um, but... Again, we'll be walking through this entire process for the 5E3. And uh, the next series of videos coming up will also explain, of course, the board, uh, the actual uh, little things in the chassis itself, like how the screws need to be placed and things like that. So we'll go over all that little stuff that normally people would look over and, and not really think about until after you get it together. And it's like, oh, I should have put that in upside down, you know, would have fit better or something like that. So that's it, okay? If you have any questions whatsoever, please contact us at tech at mojotone.com. Um, again, we're not in the office. I'm not near my phone, but I have email with me all day, and I love chatting with people and trying to help people with these things. They even, you know, even if it's not the 5e3 kit, any kit that we sell, you know, we can work through it. And I have yet to really have anybody that can't get one of these together, especially the 5e3s, because they're just so straightforward and there's so much in information out there um, to do these. Okay? All right, so come back and I'll have much more information for you as it comes available.